Hello and welcome to another edition of Inside Guns with your host, me, the Yankee Marshall. Today I want to talk about something we've all been dealing with for a little while now, and that is a firearms and ammo shortage. But today I want to speak mostly about the firearms shortage. We've been dealing with that for quite a while now. If you're someone who's looking to buy a gun, good luck. It's hard to find any dealerships that have any stock, hardly at all. If they have anything at all, they definitely don't have a lot of diversity right now. So if you're someone looking for something different, you've already got some guns, good luck. If you're someone who's a first time gun buyer, who's looking for one of the more popular and reliable guns, good luck. But you know, uh, like I said, I think there's some light at the end of the tunnel now. I said in a previous video because of the vaccine that's coming out, but I want to talk about the actual reason why we're in this shortage right now, while we're in this situation. There's been a lot of panic buying, but I don't think it's the normal panic buying. A lot of people always think of panic buying as, oh, people that are gun lovers, they get worried that things are gonna go bad, that they're gonna not be able to get any more of certain things like ARs, etc., and they run out and buy up all the ARs, all the Glocks, all the this, all the that, and all the ammo that goes with it. Uh, they do this for two reasons. One, because they wanna have it, they're afraid they can't, ain't gonna be able to get it later, or they're speculating. They're saying, hey, once we're no longer to get, able to get these things, uh, the prices are going to skyrocket on them and I'll make a fortune reselling it. Well, throughout history, we've seen that mm, that doesn't really work out for them. But we'll talk about that more in a moment. But I want to talk about how I think this panic buying session is a little different. Usually, like I say, panic buys are driven by gun lovers, us, the gun community, people that are really worried that, hey, we're not going to get our next gun or the gun we've been waiting on getting for a while, etc., or people that are speculating. But this time, I think it's different. It's being driven by first-time gun buyers. There's a lot of people out there rushing out to buy first guns, people that haven't owned guns before. This is very common right now. In fact, talking to different FFLs and gun shops and looking at the numbers for background checks, etc., gun sales are through the roof at a time when uh, production and shipping are down, unfortunately, due to the coronavirus. But a lot of those people buying are first time buyers. Seems to be a common thing right now. So we got a lot of people going out trying to find their first gun. That's not usually the case in a panic buying situation. Usually in a panic buying situation, those first time gun owners are not motivated at all to go out and buy. But because of the civil unrest, you know, people being afraid of Antifa, people being afraid of the Proud Boys, people being afraid of this, people being afraid of that, people being afraid of their shadows and everything else. Uh, there's been a lot of people deciding that, hey, maybe those gun people were right. Maybe I do need a gun. Uh, now, I'm not saying that we're converting a lot of lefties to uh, our way of thinking as far as the Constitution, because a lot of them think that they need those guns to protect themselves from us, when that couldn't be further from the case. But I'm just saying there's a lot of first-time buyers. And because there's a lot of first-time buyers, I think that's going to make a difference in uh, what happens in the future of this shortage. Now, I do believe the shortage is going to slowly start to come back. You know, it's going to start to be less and less of a problem because as vaccines get made and people get immunized and production comes back up and shipping comes back up, guns are going to be more available. You know, it's going to take a while to catch up, but eventually they'll catch up. And we'll be back to more of a normal buying cycle. Because by then, people who panic cause the election, you know, that will die down a little. Uh, people who are worried about the civil unrest, if that dies down any, those people will settle down a little bit and sales will level back out. Now, something might happen between now and them that drives uh, a certain aspect of guns through the roof again. Like you might see that, uh, you know, they try to pass an assault weapons ban and that would drive AR prices through the roof because everybody would run out and buy all the ARs. Or they might even push that over to, you know, standard capacity handguns that hold more than 10 rounds. You'd see people rushing out and buying those. Those would be impossible to find and the price would go through the roof. Uh, but uh, barring anything unforeseen like that, sales should stabilize. Now, there's one thing a lot of us take uh, it for granted when we see all this panic buying and stuff. We wait. Because we have what we need, so we wait. And we don't want to speculate. We're not wanting to be in the secondary market for guns. So we wait, like I said. Because we know from history that every time there is one of these big panic buying events, eventually things level off. And then the speculators 
end up with whole uh, guns that they've got that they can't really sell. A lot of times they end up taking a loss on them. So you end up getting a lot of deals because they can't sell the gun new now that they purchased. They were expecting its secondary market use rate to go through the roof. And since that didn't happen, now they, they take a bath. I've known people almost lose their homes before because of speculating on like magazines and ARs and stuff like that during different panic times. So I never think that's a very good idea to do. Uh, and you also see some of the people that rushed out and bought things because they thought they were never going to be able to get them again, who now realize, oh, well, at least for the next few years, I'm still going to be able to get them. And I uh, bought this with some of my savings and I don't like that. Or I bought it on a credit card, which I'm paying high interest rating, uh, rates on. So I need to sell it and kind of pay down that balance. So you see a lot of stuff flood the market and you see cheap prices. But I want to say why I don't think that's going to be as much the case this year. And that's because of all those first time buyers. They're not speculators. They're not people that were panicking, thinking they're never going to be able to get these special guns they want. These were people that decided that they need to have at least one gun in the house for bad times. And I don't think those people are going to change their minds. It took them a lot of thought and a lot of time to get where they think, hey, we need a gun. Maybe guns are just tools. Maybe they're not evil. It depends on how I use it. So I need one in the house just to kind of level the field because all the bad guys out there have guns, which is true. Bad guys do get guns easy. Uh, so those people, I don't think they're going to change their mind. I don't think they're going to decide, oh, I don't want this Glock I bought. I'm going to sell it now and have zero guns. Don't see that happening. And since so much of the market is being sucked up by new gun owners right now, first time buyers that own one gun, I don't think you're going to see them liquidating. When it used to be, let's say, 10 people bought 100 guns each during a panic buy, well, then you saw huge liquidations later. But when you see 100 people buy one gun each, or uh, 10 guns each even, you know, 1,000 people buy one gun each, or 10, 100 people buy 10 guns each, you know what numbers I'm trying to do here, uh, you don't see as much buy-off at the end, especially not if 1,000 people buy one gun each. Out of those 1,000 guns, very few of them are ever going to make it to the secondary market. Whereas, you know, 10 people buying 100 guns each, that will make it to the secondary market, probably 90% of them. So uh, I don't expect to see big buy-offs or big sell-offs. I don't expect to see giant bargains because like I said, I don't think this panic buy or this shortage has been uh, driven by investors or you know you or Second Amendment people. I think this has been driven a lot by first time people that are just now in the gun community or just now gun owners. And I don't think they're going to change their mind in three months or four months or six months or anything. When stock comes back up, I still think we'll see some more of them buying guns because there's still some of them waiting. And I think most of them are going to hang on to that one gun for a long time, at least 90% of them. So I do see the shortage going away soon. We're towards the end. Like I said, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. But once that light, once we reach it, I don't see big sell-offs. I don't see big bargains coming like we've seen in the past. Just because, like I said, this time, the buying, it's very different. It's not driven by you and me in the gun community. It's driven by people that have been outside the gun community buying their first gun ever. And I think they're going to hold on to those. Okay, now we're to the part of the show today where I get to talk about a gun. And I'm going to speak about a very specific gun today. And you're going to understand why in here in a few minutes. In the next segment, I'm going to get to why this gun's important. Today, I want to talk about the FK Berno PSD, the 7.5 FK chambered PSD. And the reason I want to talk about this gun is because it's awesome. This is a gun that they have advertised as being something that recoils like a 45, yet can take down a bull elk in the field. It's a gun you can hunt with or shoot at the range because it is such an easily shootable gun, such an easy handling gun. Now this gun comes in 7.5 FK rounds. Uh, that's what it's chambered in. And it's an awesome caliber. It basically looks like a 10 millimeter neck down to like a 32 or a nine millimeter. I think it's a little smaller than a nine millimeter actually, but very similar. So it's actually a very potent round. And because of the way this gun is designed, because of the size of the gun, the weight of the gun, etc., which is surprisingly light for the size of the gun, this gun literally does recoil like a 45. 
Uh, my youngest son, who loves shooting 45 ACPs, has been shooting uh, this gun. We had uh, the good fortune of being able to try one of these out. And he loves it. He says, this shoots just like my 45, but it hits the target so much harder. He really loved this gun. And he's not a hunter. If he was a hunter, I'm sure he'd like it even more. So I think people should give a look at this gun. And it's not a gun that's 5,000, 6,000, you know, like some of the new guns that come out. It's about $1,600. So it's not cheap. It's about the price of two standard off the shelf retail guns. Uh, you know, if you get a decent gun or something nice or whatever, it's about, about two of those, maybe one and a half, depending on how nice. So it's about the price of a, of a decent 1911. So it's not a super expensive gun, but it is a unique gun. And it also comes uh, available with 10 millimeter barrels or nine millimeter barrels for when you just want to plink at the range and you don't want to waste that uh, expensive 7.5 FK ammo. That's a little harder to find. So this gun, like I said, when I first reviewed this gun, I said, I don't know if this gun's going to live up to the hype, but after spending time at the range, it definitely lived up to the hype. Like I said, that round is screaming. The penetration is amazing. It goes through level 3A body armor like it's, you know, warm butter. I would just say butter, but in this case, it's like it's warm butter. It tears right through it. Doesn't even seem to slow the bullet down. So... It's impressive. It does everything they said it would do. And it's, like I said, just an impressive gun, an awesome gun. Uh, I wish the ammo was more available for it. That's the biggest thing right now. This gun is awesome, except for the fact that you can't really get much 7.5 FK ammo very easily in this country yet. I'm hoping that's going to change in the near future. But you can also, like I said, get a nine millimeter or a 10 millimeter barrel with it. You can choose which one you want and you can take it to the range and shoot your regular calibers. I can't imagine how easy this thing would recoil with 10 millimeter or especially nine millimeter. It'd be like shooting a BB gun with nine millimeter. So if you're looking for a gun that's different, that's extremely capable when it comes to penetrating body armor, taking down medium sized game to even large game, but still is in a reasonable size package that you could carry if you wanted to, I would look at the FK Burno PSD because it is an awesome gun. And like I said, it's not a gun you see every day. It's unique. It's got some character. And like I say, it functions flawlessly. It does everything they say. It's really nice for once to see a gun that lives up to its advertising. All right, for the final segment tonight, I want to bring everyone's attention to something that we all know happens, but often we don't think about. This is winter. Winter's coming. Uh, cold weather, snow is ahead. And that means there's going to be so many neglected animals left out in the cold, chained to old barrels, chained to old rusty dog houses, just mistreated, left out to fend for themselves in the cold. And that breaks my heart when I think about it. I don't know about you, but I can't stand cruelty to animals. So I am partnering once again with Fur Friends Animal Rescue to raise some money to help some of these animals. Uh, if you go over to tympistolproject.com, you're going to see something we're doing right now that I think everyone out there is going to like. Uh, it's the FK Good Karma Giveaway. Uh, it's the FK Burno Good Karma Giveaway. And I'm going to explain to you here what we're doing. Recently, Fur Friends Animal Rescue has had a lot of dogs come into their care because of neglect, severe abuse. And believe me, the pictures on the website are the pictures I could find that make it look cute because the abuse pictures are horrible. I don't want to show them to people. I don't even want to have seen them. But uh, it reminds you of how evil some people are and there's no other word for it. So uh, I'm getting a little bit clipped here talking about it and thinking about the pictures. Uh, so I don't want to show you those. But I want everyone to go over there. I'm going to be doing a fundraiser here to raise money to help them care for these animals. The ones I'm showing you, that's only a tiny, small number of the animals they're actually trying to take care of, trying to bring in from the cold, trying to teach these animals uh, that all humans aren't monsters and that they can know love. Uh, this is my, one of my favorite charities. Uh, they do so much for animals. It's how I got my dogs, Turnip and Django. Both of them came from the efforts of Fur Friends Animal Rescues. They're both uh, alumni of that organization. 
Uh, and they work all over. They don't just work here in Washington. Uh, some of the dogs they brought up from California, Utah, Texas, you know, they work with dogs from all over. So I want to raise some money for them here to try to deal with these increased costs that all these animal rescues face in the uh, winter time due to the uh, flood of animals coming in that are neglected, abused, left in bad situations. So I want to give back a little bit to the people who do donate. If you go over there to the website, you're going to see a description of what we're doing here. And you're going to see some guidelines of not only how to donate, but what you can receive for each amount you donate. Because like I said, good karma. I like to give things to people who do nice things. Now, some of the stuff is just prizes. Like if you donate anywhere between $10 and $19, you're going to be registered to win a custom holster from Lobo Gun Leather. You know, for whatever gun you carry, if they make a holster for that gun, you can have it. That'll be one person will be chosen from that price range. Uh, from $20 to $49, if you donate that, well, then you're going to be registered to win two bulk boxes of ammo from Minuteman Ammunitions LLC. One of my favorite ammo manufacturers. I'm going to buy a couple of bulk boxes from them. I'm going to send them to whoever gets selected from the people who donate $20 up to $49. Now, if you donate $50 up to $99, you're going to get one of our patches, one of our K9 patches. Uh, these patches can only be had by donating to animal charities. I don't sell these. These are for people that did something special for animals, someone who did uh, above and beyond. So if you donate $50, you're going to get one of these patches and you're going to be put on my good karma list. And we'll explain what that means here in a minute. Also, for people who donate $100 and up, you're going to be put on the good karma list and you're going to receive one of the K9 pins another item that you can't get unless you do something extraordinary to help save an animal save a pet so those will go to people who donate a hundred dollars or more and they will also like I said be on my karma list well since I believe what goes around comes around I like to reward people who build up some good karma. So I like to keep a list of people that have done nice things. And there's enough room on my good karma list for 100 people. And at the end of this fundraiser, I'm going to choose one of those 100 people. And you are going to win a brand new FK Burno PSD. That's why I discussed that gun today. Due to the generosity of FK Burno, their USA division, you're going to get this gun free of cost. One person's going to get this gun. Brand new. This gun is awesome, like I said. And I'm not just saying that. If you watch my videos before I even knew this was happening, I have very high, uh, very pleasant things to say about this gun. Very high praise for it. So, like I said, thanks to the generosity of FK Burno, that's going to be something I give to one person from that list of 100 people on my good karma list. So, hopefully... Everyone out there will go over and donate to this cause just because it's the right thing to do. Like I said, show these animals, show these puppies, show these little things that all of us aren't monsters and that most of them will give them love and that they are worthy of love. Try to teach them that not everyone is cruel. Uh, that, that's the reason to go donate. Even if it's a dollar, two dollars, five dollars, please go donate. All the funds, every penny is going to go to Fur Friends Animal Rescue. I don't keep a nickel of it. I foot the cost for the for the uh, ammo, for the holster, for the patches, for the pins. And FK Burno foot, footed the cost for the gun. So uh, every dime is going to go where it belongs. It's not going to be in anybody else's pocket. So please go over and donate. Like I said, you should want to donate just because it's the right thing to do. But like I said, I like to give back a little bit. So I do want to give people a chance to win those prizes. So go over and look. And it is on the page telling you how much you have to donate to be registered for uh, each uh, set of prizes there. And uh, I will be doing the drawing at the end of December. So we're going to run this for probably, uh, I would say, till the 31st. Uh, try to get a full month out of it. Starting the 2nd, going to the 31st. So go on over. Please donate. Like I said, these animal charities are why I do this. Uh, I believe in the Second Amendment strongly. And the only reason I do any types of fundraisers other than just getting on here running my mouth is to try to 
help other people exercise their Second Amendment rights, and to more importantly, to help when we can when it comes to animals in need. So this is near and dear to my heart. Uh, I've made it my life's goal to help as many animals I poss as I possibly can, and with your help, we can help lots of them. We've already helped lots of them. So please go over, donate, get registered to win the custom holster from Lobo Leather, the bulk packs of ammo from Minuteman Ammo, the patches, the pins, and to get on that good karma list to maybe receive, well, no, maybe, there's definitely one person who will definitely receive it, but maybe it'll be you, receive a brand new FK Burno PSD from FK Burno. All right, there you have it. Another edition of Inside Guns with the Yankee Marshal. Hope you all enjoyed the episode and hope you'll come back tomorrow. And as always, remember, this channel is 100% funded by viewers. We do not take advertising. We do not take sponsorship. So if you want to become a patron, go over to patreon.com forward slash the Yankee Marshal. Sign up. Be a patron. There's going to be some new options over there soon for membership where I'm going to be giving away some new patches because we're coming up on 2021 now. So the 2020s are going to be outdated. And if you want one of the 2020 patches, like the patches, the pins, etc., this is your last chance. This month will be the month you'll have to be a patron to get them. So go on over to Patreon, become a patron of the channel. And with that said, as far as the state of the world today, it is what it is. But if we do the things we can do together, if we work together, what things will be in the future is better. 